normal people get from reading Berlin for Jews is a sense of how much this vital Berlin of the 21st century owes to a civilization that gave it so much and how much that civilization remains present. I want people to go to Berlin and have fun there the way I do when I'm there and eat well and go to one of the three opera companies or the seven orchestras or the dozens and dozens of museums. Of course, to meet the young people because Berlin is a city of young people, to eat in every imaginable cuisine, to go to the radically divergent neighborhoods, each with its own sort of culture and charm, all of them in constant flux. I want people to have all that pleasure in the city and not to feel guilty about it. And not to feel guilty about it because they can recollect that the ground on which they are enjoying themselves is a ground built up through the 19th century in important part by a Jewish civilization. Sometimes when I talk about Berlin for Jews to a group, I begin by asking for a show of hands. And the question I ask is, how many people in the room refuse to go to Berlin? There's always a few hands that go up, and I say, I wrote this book for you. And what I mean by that is that we come with a sense of the heavy hand of history in Berlin. We all have that, and I cannot remove it. It cannot be removed. My story is about the life of that community, a life that had extraordinary vitality uh, for at least 100 or 150 years. In fact, in the later 19th century or the beginning of the 20th century, Berlin was probably the city with the most vibrant and important contributing Jewish population. Uh, wealth, taste, science, philosophy, the arts. This was a great Jewish civilization. Berlin for Jews, I sometimes call a Jewish love letter to Berlin. A kind of an explanation of why I find Berlin to be so profoundly Jewish a place. Not only in memory, here in the cemetery, we think of that as a matter of memory and loss, perhaps, but even in Berlin as it exists to this day. That is to say, the kind of culture that's valued here after everything that happened to it in the 20th century still maintains a sense of what it means to be a place of, of art and learning and of open discussion of liberal politics, of liberal thinking, of the liberal arts. So the book is really, it's a little bit about me, it's a little bit about history, and we walk through various lives uh, of great and interesting Berlin Jews from the early 19th century in the person of Rachel Warnhagen, the great salon lady, to the mid 19th century, the extraordinary art collector and art donor James Simon, to the uh, beginning of the 20th century, the utterly remarkable cultural critic of Alta Benjamin. So these three people are my three Berlin Jews, and they represent a kind of uh, non-orthodox, in every sense of the word, a non-orthodox vision of what a Jew could do uh, to make Berlin the city that it is, and all three of them have left their mark on the city. But the book is also a kind of travelogue, and it takes the reader through locations that are important uh, to the history of Jews in Berlin, and that, um, despite what one may imagine about the destructions of Berlin, locations that are still, in one way or another, there to be seen. Uh, and these, one of which, these locations is, of course, this one, the Schönhaus Allee Jewish Cemetery, and another one is a remarkable neighborhood invented by a Jewish landowner. If you visit Berlin, as I try to show in Berlin for Jews, you can find not only the historical markers of that disappeared civilization, but the continuing vibrant life that those remarkable individuals contributed to uh, when they had the chance to be the important civilization they were in Berlin.